Fundamental to our legal system is the right to have a fair judge and a fair jury. In family court, there is no jury, and therefore it's more important than ever that a judge makes their appropriate disclosures and removes themselves or recuses from a case if they don't think that they can be fair. Yet too often we find that judges are failing to disclose and failing to remove themselves, resulting in lawyers and litigants having to file motions to disqualify the judges. She needs her own box. Me Look too. at this. She needs her own box. To keep box to keep them organized. Normally I can put them in here. She needs her own box. Bye. This is a licensed process server. He is an officer of the court, and he was hired after a lawyer had to file a disqualification motion on a family court judge in Santa Clara County, a judge who had failed to make his proper disclosures. And because there are no cameras permitted inside the courthouse, we have to show you what happened once he got inside. And we're going to do that by the due diligence report that he filed right after. My order is to stand by until they're finished with court. The legal procedure for serving a judge a disqualification when you think they've acted with bias or violated the law in your case is to simply serve a disqualification through their courtroom clerk. But when the process server went to serve a seasoned family law judge, Judge James Towery, in Santa Clara County, they sent him around the courthouse and refused to file and serve the document, making him return the following day. When he returned the following day, he served the judge at an elevator, telling him that he was a U.S. veteran Marine and he was going to serve that document one way or another. And when he tried to get the document filed in the courtroom, Judge Towery threatened him with arrest and made his bailiff remove him from the courtroom. I have a judge not accepting service and I'm out on the street asking people what they think. Here's the process server. Uh, you're live on YouTube. I will do it tomorrow morning. Well, we'll get him in a second. So, Adam, why don't you tell us first about what it was like to serve Judge Towery earlier? I was surprised I caught him in the hallway. That's the first thing. The run around was, here. was it him? It has to be filed here? Not that. She can't, Carlo Jack said she could or could not sign for it. Just basically um, very Kafka-esque. You saw him at the elevator. I, and what I, did you say? I, was, had, I was, had everything like this, and my paperwork in my box. And I realized it was, it was obviously Judge Tree because I was there literally four times yesterday. You confirmed it was Judge Tree. confirmed. Says, uh, so Your Honor said, uh, some process services. And it says, I've, I've served. Says, I don't accept this. Look. And I said, exactly. Says, look, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing my work. I'm a process server. And I said, look, I'm a vet. I, 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 res I, I respect you. I can, the drop server hand to you or either hand it to you or then not. And then he accepted that. And he took it and he turned around and went back to the chambers. And that was it. So he has accepted service, but refused to and file. The, but the only but before they put in there, I was in back in the courthouse again. This is court this morning, waiting for this, to, uh, this or this afternoon to get the. Uh, I was there earlier. He was not in chambers. They're waiting for uh, one other lawyer to arrive, which he did not. The judge came back in. And I was looking down at my notes, and then I heard the bailiff bond his name is uh, said uh, everyone remained. I remained seated. Looked up. And the first thing the judge says, that is, there's a process server in the back row. He doesn't belong here. He kicked me out. I waited about half an hour. made some calls to you, to, to Kimberly. Uh, I tried to make one last attempt. And that's what the, uh, the bailiff said. And then he basically kicked me out. He says, you have two choices. You can either go out this way, come back in. You can go out this door or that door. And that was it. So I'm he done. kicked you out of a public proceeding. Twice. He identified you as a process. He identified me as a process. And he had you removed and from the courtroom. Right. And the documents did not get filed. They are still with me as we speak. He wouldn't accept them. The clerk, the clerk, that was the clerk's job to accept yes. them. The clerk did not accept them and would not file them. Over the last seven years, I've taken thousands of videos on this sidewalk. I've taken video of sheriff's deputies, of protesters, of lawyers, and of litigants, and I've even taken them of judges, because that's the only way we can explain what is going on inside the courthouses where the cameras are not allowed. When we don't have cameras in courtrooms, we can't see judges trying to evade service from process servers. We can't see what court clerks are doing or not doing, and whether everybody inside that courthouse is following the law as they are paid to do. Instinct, a hunch, situational awareness, or just that little voice in our head that tells us something is not right is something that we want everybody to have. We want everybody to understand the difference between right and wrong, whether they're a lawyer, a judge, or a police officer on the street. And this police officer turned around one day because he saw me recording in a different direction. He had a hunch. 
and when he turned around and saw me filming him, he knew I had every right to do so. This police officer just waved and walked away. The video that I posted on it in my shorts has almost 600,000 views, and all of you have a different opinion about what he did or why it was important. For me, it was important because he was a cop with an instinct. He looked decent, and he could potentially be a witness to what was going on in that courthouse when a judge was evading service. Uh, you actually, would you like to make a statement? All four of them who were residing in Los Altos. Mr. Baugh, do you care to comment on your relationship with Judge Stewart? and your relationship with Valerie Houghton. Mr. Baugh, did you in fact represent Valerie Houghton in a civil restraining order against a client? Mr. Baugh, are you aware that Valerie Houghton is under indictment right now for white collar crimes, felony indictment? Lawyers are also officers of the court and they have a special duty to tell the truth and to have candor with the judges. And the judges have a special duty to discipline lawyers and police officers who lie in court. The public being able to watch this is very, very important. And when a judge is in a big club with a bunch of police officers and lawyers and the public doesn't get to see what's going on, those judges are less likely to discipline the lawyers and the police officers who appear in cases before them. Police officers aren't allowed to kick the public out of watching their investigation at a safe distance. These police officers knew that there were security cameras on houses, that Google could be flying drones overhead, and yet when one guy with a camera appeared on the street, they tried to kick him down the street around the corner, and they started putting up red recording tape to keep him from seeing what they were doing. The police officers were very uncomfortable having a member of the public watching them do their job. And they better get used to it because that's what the public is supposed to do. I have some more information regarding the judge. It's well known in juvenile court that strong force and a strong speed have not only worked together, but also had a personal relationship outside the courtroom. And this was going on when, when he was married. He was very flirtatious of all the women in the courthouse and really thinks of himself as a ladies man. That was a court clerk calling to tell a litigant about a sexual relationship that the judge was having with the attorneys and the minors counsel involved in the case. It involved therapists and others, but it pointed out the fact that the judge could not be fair because of the relationships that he had. And those are the kinds of relationships that we discovered were going on at the Three Flames restaurant, where judges, lawyers, police officers, and reporters were meeting in secret, and the public had no idea that was going on. And that is the basis of the disqualification against Judge Towery. This is, for me, I'm a reporter. I've been a publisher. I've lived here. I used to do write-up magazine things here. And for, to not know that this happened, and it was public judges and attorneys and police, and they were talking about s issues of serious, you and, know. And they did send flyers out, I know that, because they'd always give us one. They did. Mm -hmm. They would give you one in advance, like who was going to come talk. And yeah, just let us know what was going on. So they sent flyers. Mm -hmm. It just yeah, I, I don't know anything about it. I've like set up a subcontractor. I just, just served the food. And you know, you want to know something interesting? The media that was invited, 90% of the time was the Mercury and NBC. Interesting, huh? Not anybody else. Not the freelancers. Yeah. Not, you know, and so I, I'm looking into this because it was going on during the recall of Persky. And so what we're starting to see is it influenced headlines. It influenced jurors. It influenced everything. Yeah, I don't know what they talked about, what they did, who came. I have no idea. Like I said, we're a subcontractor. Yeah. They haven't done it in, I'd say, about four years. Because of, but it stopped because of COVID. No, they stopped before COVID. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. I have records that show it was going on in 2020 and 20. They, they, they had stopped before COVID. It couldn't have been records here. I, I don't know. I'd have to go back into my books. I wonder if they changed places. Maybe. I mean, you're because I saw the prices. You guys were really affordable. The prices are, we gave them a good deal because of who they were. They got a good deal because of who they were. They were judges, lawyers, 
politicians, police officers, and reporters, the most respected members of the community, and yet they weren't following the law. They weren't disclosing these secret meetings and the conflicts they created. They weren't disclosing their social, personal, and financial relationships so that people could be afforded due process. They took children from parents, they took homes from families, and they sent people to jail without due process. And we're going to continue to investigate how these relationships and conflicts tainted trials, tainted headlines, and tainted local elections. And we're going to keep digging until we find somebody who's willing to stand up and do the right thing and admit what was going on in Santa Clara County for all of these years. So we're out investigating the Bar Bench Media Police Committee and I just explained that to you. What do you think that looks like? It looks like a club. It looks like a club. The judges, the lawyers, the police officers, and the reporters. Wow. And Judge Towery was just served in that courthouse with the papers that we know about Bar Bench Media Police Committee. Wow. 